Welcome to Home Building 101, Scoble Homes. My name is Teresa Griffiths. I'm a land surveyor and mapper. Our first question, what does a surveyor do? Hey, what? Typically a surveyor yep. will come out here, we'll locate the property the corners, the the we'll check and make sure everything fits for the control for the subdivision. And then secondly, what we do, if everything works okay in that department, then we start staking the house so that you guys, when you build the house, you stay within the building setbacks because all lots have a building setback requirement or they have a public utility easement, which are two lines you cannot violate and cross with the house itself when you're building it. And um, so the public utility easements and the building setbacks, what are the purposes of those? Well, the utility easements are on the property itself. And what happens is your telephone, your cable TV, electric, water, they will run their utility lines underground within that easement. And that also allows them to put water meters, gas meters, things like that so that they can service your house. The building setback line is meant to keep the house a certain distance from the property line. Or in some cases, like you have here, we also have a fire code that requires six foot between house to house. So what I needed to do here was to locate that house and make sure I had the clearance before I start staking the house for construction. And how do you find the property corners? Uh, we have a metal locator, a shovel, and a couple of hard working guys. That's one. What I typically do is if it's in a recorded subdivision, I'll take the plat. I can coordinate it. Uh, we come out here and find some control points to set up on, which he has set up on the control point here. And we have the uh, back site down there What's on the that? control point. And with yeah, that information, I can coordinate everything in the and office. Another, I, I upload that information point. into a data collector, which allows us to come out here and by basically punching the collector, it will tell us what angle and distance to turn and look for a corner. What kind of tra training and education is required for your job? Uh, for this right now, it's a four-year uh, school program with the University of Florida. Uh, Miami or other schools in the state may have it. I'm not sure. And then you have a two-year right, two requirement for working under a it's surveyor, right licensed surveyor in a responsible position. Then you apply to take your test for the, uh, for the state. And um, uh, yeah, what type of tools do you right use you for your, I see there's an interesting looking tool right there. What well, is, this, is a, this is a top con total station, and he's got a uh, HP 48 collector hooked up to it that runs TDS uh, software. It's just a matter of, you take your points, you can create an ASCII file or a coordinate file. Uh, he'll come out here when he shoots. All right, tap right one. Shoots a distance and you hear it beeping. Used to back in the old days, a man would be I'll able be right to write down angle distances. Now, basically, he's recording all that information. So when I get back to the office, right, I upload shot, that Dad. into my computer, import the points, do a printout, and I actually have the field notes. I have the angle, the distance, and what he located. So it's, that's my field right, notes now instead 300. of having to sit out here with a field book and write down all your angles and distances like we did 30 years ago. So geometry is pretty important. Geometry is a big, yeah, big factor. What is your favorite and least favorite part of your job? Uh, well, I, I like the job because it's, it gets me, I'm either in the office or I'm in the field. I have the versatility of, of coming out here working, going to the office working. That's, that's a good part of the job. A bad part of the job is when you have, uh, you've got projects, you have to get out the door, there, there's a closing set up for somebody to buy the house. <clears throat> so you're dealing with time frames for the banks doing their financing. Has to close by this certain date and things like this, otherwise the interest rates changes and you get five days of rain weather. And then you can't work these instruments out in the rain. And, you know, we don't work and do this stuff out in the rain. So then that cuts us and that, a lot of times the weather is one of the worst parts for us because then we're double stepping it trying to catch up and meet everybody's deadline. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I That's a good point, the weather. Yeah. Um, weather does play a big factor, you know. And so surveys, um, basically when you're finished with your job, there's an actual printed survey okay. of the lot that you make. What types of, what other things are surveys used for? Well, surveys are typically used for uh, people purchasing property, doing closings on it. Uh, the bank wants a survey to make sure that, yes, there's a house built on that particular lot that they're financing. Um, you know, it's way back when you had a couple of instances, a few, maybe where people put, surveyors put a house on the wrong lot when you had nothing but straight, long blocks, you know. So, I mean, the, the bank wants to make, make sure that what they're financing is there. 
-hmm. So my survey shows actually what is there, not a, not what is supposed to be there. So I show you the actual improvements, and then it goes from that. Do you have any um, funny or weird story that happened on the job that you'd like to share? Uh, we run uh, into all kind of things. Um, well, we get surprises from time to time when we're having to cut back into the woods uh, with a machete to cut line, and you come is. up on a uh, hornet's nest, or right you start digging in the ground head. looking for a property corner, and you're digging, right, up, you know, digging up a little wasp's nest or something, then you got people running, scattered oh whichever way you can. Uh, nine times out of ten, you drop the equipment and run away from another person. You don't run to the to the person because what you're doing is bringing the bees or what right. have you to the person. To so you run to him, he's going to run to you because <laughs> he's going to get out of your way. And uh, that's things we run into. It's um, Now, do you work alone or in a group? I see here you've got a couple. Uh, Ernie here is full-time. Daniel there is pretty much part-time. I spend a lot of time in the office, so there are days I can get Ernie out to go do certain things on a job site by himself. Um, oh, right now we've got on, these houses we're doing uh, here, so I brought in Daniel that. today. Hold on. To try and get some. Uh, yeah, hold on. Get some help. Something happened. And um, is there an example of something maybe that could go wrong with your job? Uh, yeah, the equipment, the data collector could crash on me. I lose my I lose yeah, my information, which puts me Start back in the office. Um, the instrument could accidentally get dropped. Itself. That right there stops you dead in the water. You can't do well, anything me, uh, with the instrument until you get checked let me go ahead out. Go and shoot you again. And have there ever been instances where you put the corners or mark something incorrectly on the survey? No. No? That's no. good. No. I, I check my work, and uh, if there's any adjustments, I'm immediately back yeah, out there making any it. adjustments. But typically, no, that's back why I come out here a lot of times to work with these guys, see how sense? things fit. We had to tie all these corners to see how they kind of fit before I start just staking the house out. Yeah, um, last thing, there's not a lot of females out on the construction job site, so... Um, what is that like for you, or what do you have um, any encouraging words to It's it, There's a lot of women, actually, that do, that do this work. Um, there are two, for sure, licensed surveyors in town that have their own business. I know of another one, a third one. She works for a company in town. Uh, there's licensed women surveyors out here. Um, me, I like doing the field work and the office work. I was basically brought up in the office. And I don't have any problems at job sites. I get a lot of respect from the oh, contractors. Right, I put it right there. Uh, you know, I mean, that's dead center. They that, will, that distance. it doesn't matter who you are. If you mess up, they will yell at you. If you do good, they'll be happy with you. You know, there, it's not a, uh, it's not gender specific. Women can get into this and they, they can make a difference. And, you know, I'm out here doing the job. There's no reason why somebody else, if they want to do it, they shouldn't be able to do it. How long have you been doing surveying for? 20 years. 20 years. Building corner. So that's the actual location of the corner of the building where he's at right now. Any sort of infrastructure in the whole United States. Bridges, roads, culverts, pipe culverts, whole subdivision, electricals, uh, you know, the power lines that are running through the country, all that stuff. They use it for everything. They use it for building, building tunnels, mining, underneath the ground, all that stuff. Cool. Anything else you want to add? Uh, um, and they use it for like harbors, you know, like to do soundings in harbors. They do it for like the English Channel Tunnel, you know the tunnel when they went underneath the ground to get the train on, under the... Is the survey, tunnel. all that. In fact, they're doing six subway lines right now in England, and each machine is called like a different name, and they're like three or four hundred feet underground, and that's all done with surveying. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's basically, it's wherever you want to go and how you want to get there. That's what's so easy. To have. And um, lots of times we're there before anybody else is there. We do also stuff for the environment, you know, environmental st studies. 